provide us an overview of the PSL as it is today? What does the PSL stand for? And, and what really is the Bolsonaro government trying to achieve in, in terms of business in Brazil? Well, Ben, it's a it's an amazing question. I believe it, this, this is the one one million dollars question. <laughs> what drives per sale? <laughs> well, it, it's important to understand the fact that before Bolsonaro's before Bolsonaro's affiliation to the party, per sale was a really small part in Brazilian political landscape, and they they had at, at least eighty deputies in the house, and they are near to insignificancy in terms of Brazilian political landscape. They, are, they were not one of the main parties and they are not recognized as an ideological party. In the contrary, they are recognized as a kind of physiological party and sometimes some polit- political figures go to, to PSL to guarantee to themselves a, a, a small piece of, the, of any, any government in any kind of situation. Uh, what changed? The Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro was a huge electoral phenomenon. And Bolsonaro elected uh, more than 50 deputies for PSL. And after this, we have a, a huge problem because in such ways, remember, I told to you that President Bolsonaro didn't feel comfortable establishing bridges. And these breeds can be interpreted uh, with, uh, by the perception about, okay, he's not comfortable to establish in breeds with the opposition. It's, it's okay. But the question is, Bolsonaro is not as a good to establishing a bridging building process with his own party. What it means, the PSL suffers with a huge lack of agenda and orientation. And this is marked by the fact that in this exactly moment, President Bolsonaro is in, is in an open confrontation with the PSL president, Luciano Bivar. And what it means for the future, probably we will see on the next months a process of fragmentation in the PSL. And this fragmentation will put the Brazilian conservative movement under a, a threat because they must choose if they are they must choose if the, the Brazilian right wing is a Bolsonarist movement or if they are a right movement. And this lack of, of cohesion inside the PSL probably will drive the president, his more closer political group, to another party. And uh, Mr. Bivar will receive the challenge to rebuild up the PSL and make PSL strong for the next year elections. Because every two years we have a kind of election here in Brazil. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the second year of the, the presidential mandate, we face here the municipal elections, who are a kind of uh, pre-presidential election race. What I mean, the election of mayors and the distribution of power between parties across the country can guarantee less or more space in the presidential election election two years ahead. So I want to focus really on what is being done in terms of uh, policy toward business, investment and trade. Um, these are the important things that we want to talk about for the people that we talk with. So all the other sort of politics aside, what actually is the Bolsonaro administration putting on the table in terms of policy to stimulate growth and investment in Brazil? Well, good. To the point, uh, the government achieved the pensions reform in the first year of the administration. This is quite good, uh, considering the fact that the Congress is really fragmented here. And probably the president will sign the pension reform until the end of this year. In the other hand, Minister Paulo Guedes is driving a really, a really strong uh, process of uh, the re- deregulation of Brazilian economy, and also it's quite important. And the government is trying to establish a lot of good policies in terms of digital platform. Mm-hmm. And the third issue, who I consider, I consider is really, I consider really important, is a, a tax reform. The government is working hard, and yesterday, Minister Guedes created a special group to 
begin the studies about the tax reform. And if the govern Bolsonaro's government was efficient in terms to to give to Brazilian society a complete pensions reform and also a taxes reform, Brazilian economy will put on in a good way to start a, a strong period of growth. And probably this will allow Bolsonaro to run in a good position for re-election.